Welcome to another video in the SOLIDWORKS Formula SAE tutorial series. This video will be part two for surface modeling of bodywork. For part one, please refer to the Formula SAE student tutorials playlist. In today's video, we'll be using the nose cone that we made in the previous video and we'll also be bringing in a side pod that we're going to be demonstrating some of the advanced features of SOLIDWORKS modeling. I've opened up the nose cone just like we were working on the previous video but I've suppressed the part where we mirrored it. Uh, we're going to be doing some things that are going to be symmetrical on the nose cone so there's no need to mirror it quite yet. The model we finished with last time is a pretty good start and it provides a really good overall look of the nose cone but it's still not a very practical model. We're going to need to make some adjustments such as suspension cutouts and cutouts for steering, shocks, things like this. Using the edging of the existing surface and some splines, I've made a sketch that outlines the cutout I want to take from the nose cone surface. In order to cut this out of the existing surface, the first thing we need to do is turn this sketch into a surface. From the surface toolbar under your command manager, I'm going to select extruded surface. Just like in an extruded feature, you're going to have a lot of the same options, but I find one of the most beneficial is to just use the sliders There are now two surfaces contained in the models. One that outlines the cut we want to make and the surface that we actually want to be cut. In order to perform this cut, select Trim Surface from the drop down menu in the Command Manager. Under Trim Tool, you're going to want to select the surface that is doing the cutting, and then under Pieces to Keep, select the surface that you want to be cut. The result will place a cut in the surface that we want to cut, but it will also leave the cutting surface intact. This can be beneficial later on when we want to combine surfaces and add fillets between them and things like that, but in this case, we just want to go ahead and hide it as we're not going to have any use for it at the moment. Now we've successfully cut out the bottom of this nose cone so we have room for the suspension components. For this specific part, we're also going to want to do cutouts for the top suspension points and the steering arm. I've gone ahead and made these cutouts already using the same process as the first surface trim that I did. Once you've made all the necessary changes to one side of the nose cone, you can go ahead and either unsuppress your mirror feature or re-mirror it if you deleted it in the first place. Now the cutouts will be applied to both sides of the nose cone. Another surfacing tool that is very beneficial is the surface knit feature. Surface knitting allows us to take two separate surfaces, which is what we have in this case, and actually knit them together and create one surface. To knit two surfaces together, just select Knit Surface from the Surfacing Toolbar, and then select the two surfaces. This can be beneficial when you're trying to combine surfaces in certain ways, or you're trying to make cuts and adjustments to surfaces that might go over the boundary of another surface. This way you can combine them together and treat them just as one complete surface. Before I move on to the side pod and some of the more advanced surfacing features, I'd like to mention one more thing you can do. When you're all done with your part and you've completed it, it's still a surface and you may actually want to turn it into a solid model or a part, something that you can add materials and weight to. To do this, use the thicken command that will also be found under the surfaces toolbar. Just select thicken and select the surface and then it will give you an option of which side you want to thicken and the amount and that's all there is to it. Doing this allows us to create a solid model from the surface. The nose cone model isn't too difficult so I've gone ahead and opened up a side pod so I can show you some of the more advanced features of SOLIDWORKS surfacing. If you look in the feature tree you can actually see what a surface model of this complexity really takes. There's a ton of different planes and lofts and fills and I'd like to go through some of these that are a little bit more. The first and still relatively simple feature is the ability to fillet surfaces. So here I have the intersection of the side surface with the top of the side pod and I can go ahead and just fillet the inside of this surface. Fillet can be a great tool to smooth out some of the edges of a surface but it can get complicated when filleting fails, especially around difficult areas. An example of this is here at the very front of the entry to the side pod where it intersects the side of the car surface. The fillet will 
react fine on the top portion, but then as it gets to this part right here, it's going to have some difficulty. There's a few different ways to handle this, but I think the best way is to actually just trim this area out and then come back and fill it in later. Just like I did with the suspension cutouts, I just went in here and trimmed out this area that was causing problems and not allowing the fillet to rebuild right. Then I've gone ahead and performed the fillet operation on this lower seam and at the upper seam. SolidWorks then provides a perfect tool for filling in problem areas just like this. Going up to your surfaces toolbar, select filled surface. Now it's going to ask us to select the boundary of the area we want to fill. So I'm going to select all the edges. And SolidWorks is going to generate a surface that can fill in that area that we were having problems with. There is one critical option to the fill surface command and that is this drop down right here. By default it says contact and the other options are tangent curvature. This controls what the boundary conditions are on the surface, whether we want to set the positions or equal, or the tangent curves, or the curvature equal. Most of the time you're actually going to want to select tangent. This will give you the smoothest surface and the smoothest surface that will come out of a mold. You can set the surfaces and edges individually if you want, so I can set some to contact or some to tangent. But most of the time I'm just going to select apply to all edges and then select tangent. In this case, the surface hasn't changed a whole lot, but you would definitely notice it later or if you actually built this model because you would have some hard edges there instead of nice flowing smooth curves. Clicking the green checkbox, I now have a nice smooth surface filled into that problem area. Rolling the model forward to the completed state, you can see that the front problem area where the side pod meets the side of the car is pretty extensively filled in using the surface fill tool. Behind the lofted surface, filled surfaces are probably the second most important tool you'll use when creating Formula SAE bodywork. That concludes part two of the surfacing tutorial. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please send them to sfalkner at solidworks.com.